Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach, with a bit of a rant. And then we're going to look at the different contestants for season eight, episode five of Landscape Painter of the Year. Now, what they do is they go back to Royal Ascot. Back, I think, in, C in episode two, they were at Royal Ascot at the front of the stadium. And so there was a lot of architecture and structure to deal with. This time they're behind the stadium and I cannot find a resource photo to work from on the internet using Google and I can't get a screenshot from the program because I don't actually think there was anything there. What I mean by that is when you see the entries, you'll see that for the most part what, what they did, what entrants did was um, do different vignettes of people as they stood around and um, I have thoughts about that. So I won't be painting my own entry for this particular episode. And I strongly disagree with who won this episode. Now, this is why I love and hate the program. I love the program because you get to see people paint and be nice to each other, which is lovely to see people being nice on TV. It's pretty rare. No, I shouldn't say it's pretty rare, but you know, it it is. Um, so this program has the same sort of spirit that the Great British Bake Off has. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. It's the Great British Baking Show. They can't say British Bake Off because of Pillsbury. So anyway, I digress, which I'll probably edit out. But this particular episode, I, I don't think the entrants were very strong to begin with. Some of the different episodes, they've had very, very strong painters. This particular episode, I don't think any of the painters were particularly strong but the one they picked, I so disagree with. And when that happens for me, it's like a knife to the heart. I don't know why I can't take television as entertainment. I seem to have to take it a little bit as a personal attack. <laughs> so it puts me off the program, it makes me go upstairs to my room and like, just kind of like, oh, I want to write a letter, but I will not be writing a letter. And as I have said in previous videos about the series, and particularly this year where I'm covering all of uh, season eight, is the judges are looking for something different. They've seen lots and lots of good painting. They're not really interested in good painting. I shouldn't say they're not interested, but that's not who they necessarily honor. They're looking for something different, something they haven't seen before, or maybe something that is, well, controversial. And I would say this was a controversial pick. Now, I don't know if you want me to uh, say or who the winner was of this particular heat, but I don't think I can hold myself back. So um, if you don't want spoilers, stop watching right now, because I am gonna spoil it. But this episode is worth spoiling. It really, really irks me. So I will not be doing an entrance entry for this one. I've already done three entries for the last three episodes. Uh, episode number four seems to be missing from the internet. That's what brought us to this one, episode five. And the next is episode six, where the, where the program returns to its roots. They go back to actual landscape painting. It's gonna be on the shores of Strength Forth Lock in County Down. And so I am gonna to need to find a screenshot of that. And I think I will make my own entry for that one. So now let's go ahead and look at the paintings. And I would really like to know from you if you agree with how much I disagree. Do you agree to disagree? That's often the way, good way to end an argument. Yes, I agree to disagree. Problem solved. All right, let's get started. As I said, this was the back side of the stadium and for the life of me, I don't know where these pods were set up. I could not get any kind of screenshot or any kind of sense of, of what the painters were actually looking at other than a blank field with a white fence around it. And later as the day progressed, there were more and more people in little vignettes standing around and talking and whatnot. And I think in the end, that's what most people painted. So um, as I this is the first contestant. And I, I like the whimsy of this. Uh, the composition's pretty good. Um, I really don't have a lot to say about this one. That, that's, all I'll, that's all I'll say so far. Now, I love a square painting. I often paint in a square myself. I love a square. So uh, I am partial to this one. 
Uh, this one has some strong painting elements to it. Um, but you can see there's quite a challenge here because there was no actual structure to work from. Like I said, it was an open field. There were some tents. There were some people sitting in chairs or, or uh, standing around. But I think that this person was able to get a good composition out of that and very strong use of color as well. So this one I find quite painterly and actually enjoy. The next one is a bit of a controversy for me. This is pencil. I don't have a problem with pencil, but the commentary from um, the program was that this was that this was sort of a political statement about uh, the people and the masses and, and perhaps celebrity. I don't know. But my point just is this person already had a preconceived idea of what they were going to do before they showed up that day. And I don't find it responsive to the landscape that was presented or the setting in any way. So although I've com commented about it, I'm not going to say any more about it. But as I said earlier, I will spoil who won. It was not this one. The next one, we're back to painting. And this looks more like what the program had shots of throughout. Very far away building, slightly white, and then these different crowds and vignettes of people. I, um, gosh, I wish I had more to say about this painting. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't find it particularly strong one way or another. There's a structure missing for me and a lot of emphasis on horizontals. I enjoy the sky, though. Gotta say, I do enjoy the sky. This one, uh, the judges liked quite a bit. I do like an umbrella when it's thrown in there, especially as an abstract shape, so I like that. Um, there is a lot of use of black in this painting. Um, I'm not really partial to black in paintings. I find that it dulls everything down. And when possible, I like to heighten color instead. That's just a personal preference. Um, so this was, you know, I just can't even say very much about it. It's I'm looking for a painting that sort of makes your mouth or jaw drop a little bit, like, oh, holy cow, how'd they do that? But, you know, they were really hampered. They had, it was a beautiful day. There was a lot of sunlight, but they put them in front of virtually nothing to paint unless somebody wandered through or they invented something. I would have been tearing my hair out. So the fact that they came up with anything at all is probably means that they all should have won. Now, the next one is the winner of the heat, and I so strongly disagree with this one. For me, this painting looks like an underpainting. An underpainting. Ugh. And yet, I have to say, in terms of composition and in terms of value shapes and um, overall feel of the day, I guess, I guess it's, it's very, very strong. But being locked into ultramarine blue or Prussian blue all the way through, like I said, makes me feel like it was an underpainting. But the judges responded to this very, very positively. I don't. I, I just find, for me, it's, it's missing so much. There's a lot there that's good, but, um, but missing so much. The next one is full of whimsy for me. This, again, looks very much like what they gave the painters to look at. You know, this big wide open field, perhaps some people sitting or standing and horses running through. And like I said, I wouldn't have known what I would have done in this case, but, uh, but there is our number seven participant. And the last one, uh, what the painter did was he put two canvases together and did two separate paintings. I got to say, this really speaks to me. See, I just really like really good painting. And, um, you know, this has a strong value pattern to follow. Um, it's anchored into that grass. Something about this really works in terms of space and continuity. Uh, and, you know, I think when you're landscaping, you're landscaping, you're looking for a sense of place, but that's not what this episode was about. Then, so we are going to go on to the next episode and I will make a, my own painting about that one. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, master value mix for color. And I'll see you next time. Oh, and let me know what you think. Bye-bye.